Yes! It's time for another Metal Gear Solid! So what am I in for this time, Colonel? Uh, about that snake, uh, you won't be needed for this mission. What? But the fans will be outraged! What's a Metal Gear Solid without Solid Snake? God, my girlfriend is so annoying! Don't you even start! Alright, well... This game looks and plays a lot better than the last one, that's for sure. But... There's nothing wrong with Raiden. I know, I know, it's not that. Something else about this game just feels... hollow. In comparison to the first Metal Gear Solid, right? Because this one's still amazing. Uh, well, it's a lot of things, actually. Oh, come on, like what? Gameplay doesn't feel right. It's jerky and janky compared to the last one. The last one was designed for top-down exclusive gameplay, whereas MGS2 incorporated first-person shooting. But you can't move in first person, making the disorientation from camera jumping even worse and more frequent. Not to mention you'll see things differently in first person than overhead view, and some threats will just come out of nowhere. It's still a stealth-focused game, acquiring new weapons and mission tasks as you progress, so at heart, it's still the same game. But something still doesn't feel right. It's not the unforgiving, awkward nature of the PS2 stealth either. But once you get the hang of it, the controls feel pretty good. It also helps knowing where all the guards are to hold them up and collect their dog tags. Some segments have you running blindly towards the screen Crash Bandicoot style, blind to any upcoming threats, or angled strangely so you can't see things waiting around the corner to kill you. Somebody sounds like Raiden with all the whining they're doing. Don't you dare go there! Just compared to the last game, it feels like the life got drained out of the world. Bosses are cool, but don't play very well. Stealth feels weird and doesn't feel as good to play as before. I can't put my finger on it, but something's just not right. Uh-huh. By the way, do you know what day it is today? Shut up. Ugh, we don't talk anymore. You can't just keep pushing me away. <clears throat> you know what? I'll give it to you. I can't isolate why I'm not loving the gameplay. It's fine. But you know what I think the real problem is? The game just doesn't look good. Okay, now to be fair, it's from that in-between era of games where they weren't blocky anymore, but they didn't really start looking believable yet either. It's not even that. I can get past that and understand that. But the game is just washed out and colorless. Everything looks plastic and dead, especially the emotionless and bland codec. Now oh, come on, be fair here! It's a PS2 game, way ahead of its time for using detailed face and body animations to tell a complex story. But some codec calls can put you to sleep, if the color palette didn't already. This was even before the brown era of video games, so you could say that people were possibly copying the look of MGS2 to try and make their games look just as good going forward. Okay, okay, maybe you're right. It's honestly not bad or anything. I'm just trying to figure out why this one feels like a big empty shell. But you want to know where this game definitely shines best? <laughs> MGS2 has an absolutely incredible story. Really? I wasn't too impressed with about half of it, honestly. You've got to be kidding me. People are still writing essays on how MGS2 predicted and showed us the dangers of a world dominated by computers and artificial life. They're also still talking about how it might even be the best Metal Gear Solid story ever. Well, they're forgetting the real slog of an eventless first half. The story doesn't really pick up until a certain character, I won't name here to avoid spoilers, dies. And even then, you're just given an enormous exposition dump. That's not how you tell stories. But it was amazing! I was absolutely losing my mind at the time, freaking out about how crazy it all was. Which, by the way, you can see in my complete Let's Play series, shameless plug. I'll give you that this script would make an amazing novel. 
But as a video game, the story does not match the pacing the game requires for a satisfying, balanced gameplay experience. But it needs to be a game, with all the crazy fourth wall breaking moments happening later in the game. And as the story could only work in this altered history universe of Metal Gear, it's great! But some things are just stupid and go unexplained until MGS4. Like Liquid Snake somehow living inside Revolver Ocelot's arm? You're overblowing this game. But Jack, you won't see me for the woman I really am. I don't want to just be demoted to nothing more than Jack's girlfriend. You're my girlfriend now? You've just been playing with yourself this entire time. You know what might be the real, real problem with this game? Let me guess, it's the... Yes, the music, or lack thereof. Listening to the soundtrack, you'll hear all the crazy new tracks that were made just for this game. Yeah, and instead, for 90% of the game, you'll be listening to ambient silence. And during a stealth game, that's a recipe for inescapable boredom. Some themes like the boss themes are awesome. That doesn't change the fact that during the vast majority of this awkward, janky, colorless snooze fest, you'll be listening to nothing but your life wasting away. Dude, listen to the actual soundtrack. It's amazing. I am so conflicted. If you played the first Metal Gear Solid and still haven't played this one, you've got to check it out no matter what people are saying about it. This feels like a parody of Metal Gear Solid, with a monumental theoretical doctorate level thesis to absorb at the end. There's so much to say about this game, but it's all better left unsaid, just so you can experience it all for yourself firsthand. Naggy Girlfriend Simulator. The positive gamer in me loved MGS2, giving it an outstanding nine out of 10. No, it's not the original, but looking back at all the insane, mind-blowing moments this game brings forward justify it all for me. This game was even fun enough to replay and collect all the dog tags once I finally got good at sneaking around. So don't listen to that other guy, he doesn't know what he's missing. The critical gamer in me struggles to come to terms with this hollow feeling I get from MGS2, reluctantly giving it a 7 out of 10. Nothing about the game stands out as having poor quality, but everything seems to converge in the end, resulting in a generally underwhelming and bland experience. It's not bad at all. It's great. But don't be fooled by that other guy overblowing the game. Who's right then? Let us know in the comments below how your positive and critical sides rate Metal Gear Solid 2 in the comments below. But if you find yourself simply ignoring the faults of a game or exaggerating them unjustifiably, then you're just playing with yourself. But Jack, you didn't even thank the Patreon members. Don't you care about them? You never show me that you care anymore either. Notice me, senpai! Shut up! Now, here's a list of people who are all cooler than Hamster. Big thanks to our Patreon members, Atomic Thomas, Ben, Sid, Denny, Erica, Kai, Rowan, and SquadFam. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more. And we will see you guys in the next video. Boop.